the railroad south. Solidarity with the people of East Palestine. Solidarity with the people of East Palestine. Nationalize the railroads now. Nationalize the railroads now. This, my name is Steve Zeltzer. I'm with the United Front Committee for Labor Party, and we're here today in solidarity with the people of East Palestine and also the people of Hunters Point. And what is the connection? Uh, there is a real connection because, in fact, Tetra Tech, uh, the uh, contractor that was in charge of remediation of and cleaning up Hunters Point. Um, and which cost over a billion dollars, has also been hired by Norfolk Southern Boo. to uh, supposedly clean up uh, East Palestine. And they've, they've done studies there, and apparently, apparently they uh, found out that uh, no, there's, it, there's no problem there with the air. Air is fine. Don't worry. Be happy. And uh, I think this is one of the problems that uh, Tetra Tech and these uh, did when it was uh, doing the uh, uh, remediation here in San Francisco and testing. He said there was no problem as well at Hunter's Point. We know, in fact, that that was not the case. Uh, Hunter's Point is a heavily uh, polluted, radioactive dump ground. And, in fact, it's, uh, it's a, a dumping ground for... It's been a dumping ground since... Uh, the atomic weapons were brought to Hunter's Point and ships were brought to Hunter's Point. So um, we uh, believe that, in fact, uh, the cover-up by uh, Tetra Tech and what happened uh, is important to understand because two uh, managers of Tetra Tech actually went to federal prison. They were sentenced in this court, in a U.S. Uh, court, for lying, for fabricating evidence. And the reality is, is that this company, despite the fact that they're still being sued by the government, along with uh, whistleblowers, has been allowed to be hired by uh, Norfolk Southern to do the testing. We have to ask here, in front of the U.S. Federal Building, why is the U.S. government, which is suing Tetra Tech, allowing Tetra Tech to be hired uh, to do testing in East Palestine? You have to ask that basic question. If they've been convicted, their managers, why would you allow them to continue to do testing in East Palestine? And what we can say about East Palestine and the release of the toxic gases, they actually burn gases. They dug a hole and burned the, the, the toxic uh, gases in the air, not only polluting East Palestine, but, but polluting all, an area, a whole regional area, uh, which is with, with dangers. And, and really, it's a crime. And, and we believe that there should be prosecution of not only Tetra Tech, but also of Norfolk Southern. And also, the, the EPA officials allow this. Now, one of the things that's happened is privatization of the government. The pri EPA now has been so privatized, they don't even have their own inspectors. They have to hire contractors to do it. That's right. And when these contractors are hired, who do they work for? Do they work for us? or they work for the developers, do they work for the rail companies, they work for the corporations. So the issue of health and safety and protection of, of the people of Hunters Point who are many who are ill, have gotten cancer, and what is happening today in East Palestine is connected. The other question that has to be raised is the railroad wrecks, because the Railroad Workers Union, Railroad Workers United, has been speaking out for many years, as well as railroad workers, for two-person crew, for proper staffing, and, and to demand that these trains slow down and they be, they be uh, uh, conducted properly. That hasn't happened. In fact, Norfolk Southern was doing re uh, buybacks, stock buybacks. It was giving their executives uh, billions and millions of dollars at the same time that they're cutting the staff. So we, we know now that this accident could have been prevented because the National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB, in a report said that this was an accident that could have been avoided. It could have been avoided. And there was just congressional hearings uh, in Congress where uh, that fact came out. And also, the same day they were having the congressional hearings, there was another uh, railway wreck in Alabama. So what is going on? What is going on? Why would you have one railway wreck after another in this country and, and endangering the people, endangering the workers? Uh, an engineer was killed on that railway wreck, and these workers are being injured. And, and as a matter of fact, the railway workers now say that they're getting toxins in their face. They haven't been provided with PPE. So these, these railroad companies really don't give a damn uh, whether or not the workers are protected, whether or not the community is protected. And we have to say that the EPA and the Department of Transportation, DOT, under uh, Pete Buttigieg, where have they been? 
Where have they been? As a matter of fact, they should have been there and they should have stopped the railroad from exploding that toxins in that pit and, and contaminating everyone. That's right. They have to stop this contamination because people are being harmed and we are calling today for the evacuation of all the people of East Palestine. That's right. yeah. They have a right to be in a safe place. Yes. Most of these people, many of them are working class people. They can't afford to move. Uh, they don't have money for hotels. Uh, immediately, they should be evacuated, and Norfolk Southern should pay for their evacuation. Yes. Yes. They should, this company is worth billions, and they can pay for their evacuation. They're responsible for the disaster. And furthermore, the U.S. government could declare this an emergency area and provide health care for these people for the rest of their lives. Yes. The people in that community deserve to have health care. Yes. Many of them are poor. They don't have doctors, and yet they're in the middle of a toxic dump that is going to affect them, their children, and their future. That land is dangerous. Th those homes are dangerous. The retail businesses are dangerous. Why would they continue to allow this kind of uh, contamination of these people? And they said, did the same thing with the people in Hunters Point. They told them it's all safe. It's all being taken care of. What happened? People in Hunters Point got cancer. They got asthma. Hunters Point Bayview and, and Treasure Island has the highest asthma in, in the city, city of San Francisco. And what, what you know is, is that it's black and brown people, poor people, who suffer because of that, that dangerous toxin and the radiation. What's behind this in Hunters Point? It's behind the developers. Uh, these companies, uh, Lennar, want to develop condos, and they don't give a damn if people are harmed. And as a matter of fact, in uh, Treasure Island, uh, the water is level is rising, they're still finding radioactive material, and they continue to build condos. This is insane, and what's behind it is a profit drive. All they care about, really, is more profit. Greed. So, greed, this is really what's behind what's happening. And the U.S. military. And the military. I mean, you know, this is, they have billions. I mean, this is a, like a, an example. They have billions and billions, 113 billion for the war in Ukraine. To, ex to expand the war, but they don't have money to take care of the residents of East Palestine. This tells you where our priorities are in this country. And it tells you why the Railroad Workers United have called for the nationalization of the railways under workers' control. And we're saying there has to be a political alternative. The Democrats in San Francisco, Nancy Pelosi, after the, the billion dollar cleanup scandal took place, you would think there would be a congressional investigation of where all this money went. A billion dollars of federal money went to clean up a hunter's point and, and it was falsified and it's still not cleaned up. No congressional hearings, no real oversight of Lennar and developers and the, and the contractors. And we say that this is wired, this is part of the systemic corruption. Michael Madry, who was an employee of Test America, uh, actually went and filed charges here at the Department of Justice to, to an investigation and prosecution of what was going on at, the, um, at Hunter's Point because they, they, the testing company was doing tests at Hunter's Point and they were negative. Zero. Zero test results at Hunter's Point. I mean, can you imagine that? And uh, for, for asbestos, and uh, terpentine is a, is a big asbestos at Hunter's Point, and, and the tests come back zero. That's because the company refused to do the proper testing. So we're saying that we're in solidarity with the people of uh, East Palestine, with the railroad workers. Enough is enough. We're saying evacuate the people, and we have to have justice and human rights for the workers and the community. Enough is enough. For decades here in Ohio, elsewhere around the nation, TetraTech and its subsidiaries have clearly established themselves as a criminal organization, as a criminal enterprise. And while the profit margin has uh, been brought up and is clearly the uh, dominant uh, motivating factor in their activities. This is not victimless crimes. And I say that not uh, dealing with abstract facts and figures either. I say that as someone who personally knows several individuals who are suffering from cancers, from asthma, as a direct result of the toxins and pollutants that this contractor has consistently covered up. There is no reason to believe that they have turned the page either. There's no reason to 
believe that uh, any sort of rendering of this is a few bad apples, which is what Tetra Tech tries to constantly promote, is much more likely that this outfit has never truly been an environmental engineering or environmental surveying outfit and has always been an intelligence connected government fixer that allows for the flipping of some of the most toxic land in the United States of America. Uh, I, I'm not going to beleaguer the point about what Tetra Tech has done here in Hunter's Point because uh, I, I'm sure much has already been said on this and will be said after uh, I speak, but I want to um, make a tie-in that may be less obvious to people that are focused on uh, uh, East Palestine and, and Hunter's Point. And I want to, uh, I want to make the tie-in with uh, particularly nuclear weapon waste. And, uh, uh, and so I, I would just like to, to take a moment and dedicate this to the Hibakusha, to all of the survivors of this wretched country's nuclear bombings. And I'd like to read a brief statement from a descendant of one of those survivors. This is uh, something, this is a statement that was made about a, a year and a half ago. On July 15th, 1945, a canister of approximately three feet by four feet and a large crate were loaded onto the USS Indianapolis at Hunters Point in southeastern San Francisco. Nuclear ingredients in the canister and a firing device in the crate were later assembled into an A-bomb called Little Boy, which exploded over the sky of Hiroshima, Japan on August 6, 1945, killing as many as 140,000 in a matter of a few months including 350 students at a high school that I graduated from. Both Hiroshima and San Francisco have a special place in my heart. The city of Hiroshima taught me the meaning of belonging in my teenage years, while in my young adulthood, San Francisco was the city where I learned to stand firmly in my own conviction. Little did I know that these two cities, dear to my soul, were somehow tied by an unbreakable bond called the nuclear legacy. The connection between the two cities was not a fleeting one. It was not only that the components of the A-bomb passed through the city, Hunters Point has its own toxic legacy of nuclear contamination that has plagued and haunted its residents to this day. This year I learned that the Hunters Point shipyard, shipyard suffered radioactive contamination during the Cold War from ships brought there after atomic bomb tests. And not only that, but the portions of the shipyard were also used by the Naval Radiological Defense Laboratory, the premier radiation research laboratory of the post-World War II era. Thus, the parts of the shipyard have been contaminated by the use, storage, accidental spills, and intentional discharges and disposals of radioactive materials. Whoa. In 1994, the Northern California Cancer Center revealed that the San Francisco Bay Area had the highest incident rates of invasive breast cancer in the world, although the link to the area's history of radioactive contamination has never been officially substantiated. Today, some 9,000 Bayview Hunters Point residents are fighting a class action lawsuit to halt multi-billion dollar developer development at the former shipyard for fear that dust stirred up by construction could be harmful to nearby schools and homes. They're demanding more extensive testing by outside scientists to ensure safety. Another lawsuit is underway against the Navy cleanup contract at Tetra Tech, EC, for allegedly falsifying radiation tests. Up to, and this is my editorial, uh, up to 90 to 97 percent of these tests, as has come out subsequently. <clears throat> In 2004, the United States EPA, the California Department of Toxic Substances Control, and the San Francisco Department of Public Health declared the hilltop portion of the shipyard safe for residents, while the 2018 discovery of radioactive objects near the site suggests otherwise. Learning all these facts I did not know before, even though I lived within half an hour drive of the shipyard for a few years back in the early 90s, the word that kept echoing in my mind was sacrifices. Pacific Asian Nuclear Free Peace Alliance, a small grassroots group in Los Angeles, California, was founded in 2017 as Fukushima Support Committee, not only to support victims of the 2011 Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster, 
but also to call attention to and dismantle the political, societal, economic systems that normalize sacrifices of underrepresented communities for the benefit of a select few. Therefore, when we say no more Hiroshima, no more Nagasaki, no more Fukushima, we're referring not only to nuclear attacks in wartime and nuclear power plant accidents, but also to people and communities that have been and continue to be harmed by all activities within the nuclear chain, including uranium mining, nuclear testing, and dumping of nuclear waste. That's right. In the case of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, civilians' lives were sacrificed for the nationalism and militarism of Imperial Japan. In Fukushima, the health and safety of the area residents were st and still are jeopardized by corporate greed and political force to protect these corporations. People were made to believe there was no danger or that the perceived risk was worth taking for the promises of good jobs and economic prosperity for, of the region. However, once victimized, they have been lied to repeatedly, silenced, neglected, and abandoned by corporations and governments who should have been accountable for their well-being. I see many similarities between Fukushima and Hunter's Point. On a more personal note, I was born and raised in the U.S. military town of Sasebo, Nagasaki. Sasebo's main industry has always been shipbuilding, and as such, it has benefited from the presence of the U.S. Naval Base and Japan's Self-Defense Force. In 1968, three years before I was born, Sasebo became the site of a violent protest. The nuclear-powered aircraft carrier USS Enterprise docked at Sasebo Harbor, and people were angry because many believed the ship was carrying nuclear weapons in violation of a government ban on the manufacture or presence of such weapons on Japanese territory. Recently, I was shocked to find that today U.S. nuclear-powered aircraft carriers still dock at Sasebo from time to time, triggering no or little protest. In fact, some speculate that Sasebo is becoming a strategic outpost for the U.S. Navy in a possible conflict with China. This is a frightening thought, but I imagine such concerns are hushed and brushed aside in favor of the promises of good jobs and economic prosperity of the region. Across the Pacific Ocean, we may be of different races, speak different languages, and prefer different foods. However, we are linked by the nuclear legacy and united by the same pain and suffering. On July 15th, the day when the cursed cargo was loaded onto the USS Indianapolis at Hunters Point, now 77 years ago, uh, I'm sorry, 70 almost 78 years ago, I stand in solidarity with people of Bayview Hunters Point in their fight for the health, safety, equity, and dignity of their community, for we are united in the same fight. No more sacrifices. Yay! No more sacrifices. Uh, and that, that was uh, from Sukuru Fos, a founding member of the Pacific Asia Nuclear Free Peace Alliance. No more sacrifices. Right. This is, this is the, the key point, the key takeaway here is the invisibilization of people. When, when you hear the, the mainstream reporting on uh, the uh, derailment in East Palestine and the scandals around testing, oftentimes they try and uh, smother the coverage with, with uh, technical jargon and competing claims about tests. Real people are sick, real people are dying, and real criminals Tetratech continue to cover it up, and we need to say no more. Thank you. Yeah. Woo! Thank you very much. And again, um, this uh, is uh, one of more rallies that we're going to be having in this country to and in San Francisco to educate people. There needs to be a united campaign because, you know, it is not just in East Palestine that you have this toxic dump. There are toxic dumps all over. In fact, uh, in Ohio is a cesspool of toxic dumps. There's a Piketon nuclear facility where there's been waste for 70 years at Piketon, Ohio. And these workers there have been contaminated and the community have been contaminated. One of the things we have to say though is that working people there are poor people. They can't afford to move. Uh, from East Palestine. They're stuck there. And when you see a, 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 a grandfather worried about his, his grandchild saying, get them out of here. What can you do to get them out of here? They're begging to protect their grandchildren so their grandchildren don't become uh, contaminated and get cancer. And, you know, the wealth of this country, the massive wealth of this country, and they can't protect the people of East Palestine? It's an issue of the working class. It's an issue of equality, humanity, human rights. I mean, there need to be human rights for the people of East Palestine. There are human, human rights of the people in Hunters Point, Bayview, and Treasure Island who've been suffering for decades. Their families have, have members have died. They've had cancer and they've had to fight for health care. Uh, Dr. Ahimsa Sumshai, who's been taking isotope uh, readings 
uh, of, of the people has found isotope, radioactive rise, isotopes in people who live and work in, in uh, Hunters Point. In fact, the University of California, San Francisco, has a center uh, for animals uh, at Hunters Point, and the workers at that center have gotten cancer, and, and they've been fighting for their workers' compensation. So, you know, this government is saying, we're not going to take care of you even when you get sick and we're responsible. The government knew that people were getting contaminated. In fact, many of the workers who worked in the ships were getting contaminated when they were sandblasting the radiated ships at Hunter's Point. The fact of the matter is people know in East Palestine that this is dangerous chemicals. No congressperson, this is amazing, no, not one congressperson has said evacuate the people uh, and make Norfolk Southern pay. Why can't they say those words? Evacuate the community to protect them. Not one. Move them into San Francisco Mo condos. You know, move them into San Francisco condos. That's a good one. We've got a lot of empty condos here in San Francisco. Let's move them into condos in San Francisco so they can be evacuated, so they can have a decent life, so their children and their grandchildren don't get contaminated. And the problem is, as we know, is the corruption uh, of, the, of the political party. Democratic Party, which runs San Francisco, has covered up the Hunters Point shipyard in Treasure Island. Uh, they have They've covered up the fact that whistleblowers have, have been fired. In fact, uh, Kamala Harris, the Vice President of the United States, was a district attorney in San Francisco before she became a California Attorney General Senator and now Vice President. And when she was here, she set up an environmental justice unit in the district attorney's office. Did that environmental justice uh, uh, unit uh, defend the workers who had been retaliated against at Hunter's Point for whistleblowing? Did they say a word? What happened to the investigation? You know, we talk about justice for all. Well, we know in this, with this system, Trump is still outside. He's not jailed. But the little people, little working people, you know, that go into a, a store because they're hungry, they're the ones that go to jail, not the billionaires. And that's what it's all about. It's a system problem. It is really a system problem in which a system is in business to make profit, is in business to uh, ship things at the lowest possible cost, endangering the lives of the community, endangering the lives of the workers. So we're saying here, we're in unity with the people of East Palestine. We demand that they be evacuated. We demand that Norfolk Southern uh, pay for it, which yeah. they can. They're, they're worth billions of dollars. Pay for the evacuation. Yeah. Yeah. Pay for the evacuation. Pay for the evacuation. Pay for the evacuation. And, and we say Jill Tetratech and Norfolk Southern executives. Jill Tetratech and Norfolk Southern executives. These people are criminally negligent. They knew that this, is gonna, this was gonna happen because when you cut the staffing of these trains, what do you expect to happen? When you have one person or a couple of people on a five mile train, I mean a train so long, and they cut the inspection of the wheels, and that's what, what happened, the wheel melted, it caught, it caught fire and melted, they caused a derailment. They know that that's gonna happen. They have science, they know it, they have precision scheduling, where they cut back on scheduling to, to so few people. And then also you have the US Congress passed a bill that ordered the workers to go back without sick days. Now how could that be? Biden, the Democratic Congress, allowed an appointed board to say you should go back to work without sick days for, for railroad workers. What does that mean? It meant that railroad workers died because they were afraid of taking off sick, because they were afraid they would be penalized. This is a, a corrupt system. This is a system that has to be challenged, and we need a political alternative. We need a working class political alternative in this country, which we're not gonna get with the Democrats and Republicans because they represent the billionaires. They represent the people that own Tetra Tech and own uh, Southern Norfolk. And the other thing that we wanna raise at this uh, rally, we may have a rally, is BlackRock. The company BlackRock actually owns a, a percentage of Norfolk Southern Railway and uh, Tetra Tech, so they're going to benefit either way. They'll benefit from cutting back on, on the workers and profiting from that way, and they'll benefit from the cleanup using Tetra Tech. I mean, this is, this is how capitalism works. I mean, they're, they're, they're criminally negligent, they're injuring people, they're, they're creating cancer, and they're going to make profit off of it. That's what it's all about. I mean, this system is an example of corruption. This is what we have here. And we're, BlackRock, I think, may be our next target to let people know, because BlackRock likes to declare itself climate, interested in the climate. 
I mean, they say that they're for climate. Why would they allow what happened in East, East Palestine to happen? Uh, blowing up the toxins. And they, they're in charge of that company. They have stock in that company. Why would they allow the Tetra Tech to do what it's done in San Francisco at Hunters Point Shipyard and Treasure Island? The reason is, is profit is the primary for these corporations. That's what they're all about. Making money, and even if it means the death of people, even if it means that families get cancer, the pain and suffering of the people of Hunters Point and Treasure Island, the pain and suffering of the people of East Palestine, this is what we're talking about here today. And, this, and we're holding this, this government accountable because the U.S. government, the EPA, uh, uh, the Department of Transportation, uh, these government agencies are supposed to protect the people of this country. In reality, they're in complicity with the corporation. That's really what's going on. People over profit. People over profit. People over profit. Clean the water in Jackson and Flint. Clean the water in Jackson and Flint. Clean the water in Jackson and Flint.